at 12. The news at noon starts right now. And happening right now, the Texas Transportation Commission is meeting to discuss several issues, including what to do about a section of Broadway, which runs through San Antonio. The Texas Transportation Commission expected to reverse course on whether to hand off a 2.2 mile section of the street over to the city of San Antonio. That commission, which oversees TxDOT, had first authorized the transfer of the portion between I-35 North to Alamo Heights city limits seven years ago, but the handoff was never completed. We are live streaming the meeting on KZ.com and we will bring you the latest when it comes to a vote. Also new details coming out about a case involving two children accused of stabbing and beating their mother in a far west side apartment. Some of that comes from a neighbor, while other information comes from juvenile court. Katrina Weber was there as the two teens had their first hearing this morning. Just one day after his 13th birthday, this boy was learning a tough lesson about the legal system. His 16 year old sister, who we previously were told was a boy, was joining in on her detention hearing by Zoom. A juvenile court judge ordered both to remain in custody, calling them a threat to themselves and others. They're accused of attacking their own mother yesterday, stabbing and beating her with a baseball bat inside their apartment in the 8,000 block of West Military. She had blood running down her arm. Alberto Quintero recalls seeing his 16-year-old neighbor early yesterday morning after waking up to her screams. He says earlier he saw her brother having a heated exchange with their mom. That day, I, <laughs> the son, uh, she was telling the son, I was walking up, she said that you were grounded and taking away the TV. The hearing didn't reveal too many details, but the attorney for the boy told me the police report states his client had made prior outcries of abuse and that the children may have been trying to get away when they allegedly went on the attack. San Antonio police did not release that report to us due to the suspects ages. The attorneys for both children say that they expect more details will come out as this case progresses. They're both due back in court here next month. Reporting from the Tejeda Juvenile Justice Center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The search for a missing teen continues. The San Antonio Police Department says it's looking for 16 year old Natalie Martinez. Officers say she has black hair and brown eyes. She weighs about 200 pounds and is five foot four. She was last seen in the 6,000 block of West Commerce last Friday wearing a white shirt and shorts. If you can help police find the girl, you're asked to call 210-207-7660. Two unrelated murder cases with one thing in common. They both remain unsolved this noon. On the northwest side, shots rang out early Sunday morning on East Skyview Drive. That's near Bandera and Callahan Roads. And now police are releasing video that was sent by a tipster, hoping it will lead to even more clues coming to light. You can see after the bullets started flying, a driver in a white car speeds by. The victim in the case, 28-year-old Ryan Asbury, was on his motorcycle when police say he got into an argument with the driver of the car, and that's when the shots were fired. Some of those bullets hit Asbury. Police say a woman ran out of the car and police to, and rather the driver took off. Now police are hoping that someone's gonna come forward with information that could lead to an arrest in this case. And the search continues for the suspect in a murder case that happened almost four years ago near East Side Apartment Complex. 25 year old Ray Richardson was last seen leaving the Artisan Apartments Back in May of 2018, he was later found dead with multiple gunshot wounds just down the road on Canton Street, not far from East Commerce Street. If you have any information about either incident, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Looking outside with live cam, warming up out there. But there's already rumblings that we got some cold coming. We do, and that's probably about a week away before we see the really cold stuff. In the meantime, uh, it's a little cool today. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 50s. We've got some cloud cover trying to work back in. We've seen sun first half of the day. I think it probably gets a little cloudier uh, later this afternoon and this evening. You can see on the big picture here across Texas that the cloud cover is shifting in west to east. A few very light returns down there around Corpus Christi as well. We'll be watching for some showers working their way into our area tonight. A little closer look at the satellite picture here over San Antonio. Those clouds just to our south and west. Uh, they'll be moving in here within the next couple of hours. Things will get a little more cloudy. 56 Hondo, 57 in Pleasanton. 
out in the sun at 61 right now in Gonzales and most anyone west of San Antonio has seen cloudy skies at this hour. Here's some fantastic news. Mountain Cedar fell out of the pollen count today. It's not there. Didn't show up. We just got mold. It's low at 190. Uh, hopefully we're seeing a, an end to Mountain Cedar season. Rest of today, we'll see temperatures top out at about 60. Temperatures are going to stay pretty level here, pretty even because of the cloud cover. And we'll start to add in some small rain chances, 6 p.m. through about 8 p.m. And those rain chances come up even more so overnight tonight. Showers, drizzle, could be a little bit wet for your morning commute tomorrow as well before all of this clears out midday tomorrow. We'll talk more about that weekend forecast coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. Now to the coronavirus pandemic in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 4,625 more people have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and another 10 people died after contracting the virus. Meanwhile, health officials around the world are tracking a new subvariant of Omicron BA2 as it spreads to the U.S. The health, World Health Organization saying it's not yet a, virant, a variant of concern, so so far no evidence that the subvariant is deadlier than Omicron. Experts say the more COVID-19 spreads, the more likely new variants and subvariants emerge. This comes as federal health officials say progress is being made on a universal COVID vaccine that could protect against multiple variants. However, it would be some time before those vaccines roll out. I don't want anyone to think that pan-coronavirus vaccines are literally around the corner in a month or two. It's going to take years to develop in an incremental fashion. Moderna announcing it is starting human trials of an Omicron specific vaccine. A local nonprofit says early detection of kidney disease saves lives and it's making it easier for people to get tested. The Texas Kidney Foundation is giving away thousands of testing kits that can detect an early sign of kidney damage. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how this new tool could help our community. My family was the reason why I got involved in it. Tiffany Jones-Smith has lost many family members to chronic kidney disease and spends her days making sure other families don't have to go through this. It doesn't have to be this way, especially as I learn more about it. Tiffany is the CEO of the Texas Kidney Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to the early detection of chronic kidney disease. The majority of people don't know that they have kidney disease. But with this new testing kit, Tiffany believes it could help save lives. The test kits are very simple. You just, you get it at your house and you just pee in your little cup. You put your dipstick in your QR code reader. You put your smartphone over the QR code and it gives you the result and it sends the results to Texas Kidney Foundation. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, the nonprofit was testing about 4,000 people for kidney disease a year. Last year, they tested about 750. And this year, thanks to this new tool, they're hoping to exceed the 4,000. Tiffany says it will take about two to three weeks to receive a testing kit. That's why it's important if you have diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, if you've been diagnosed with any of those three, or if you're obese, you, it, you need to get your kidneys tested. You should be monitoring your kidneys yearly. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up this half hour, DeMar DeRozan headed back to San Antonio with the Bulls to take on the Spurs. But before he gets here, the Bulls hosted Toronto. Larry Mears with the highlights. Texas lawmakers want the Justice Department to look into Operation Lone Star. Governor Abbott launched the effort back in March of last year. He says the goal was to address people crossing the southern border illegally. However, Texas legislators have now sent a letter to the Justice Department calling the operation a political stunt, saying it violates the Constitution and is failing Texas soldiers. The governor's office has not yet responded to that letter. Today, a formal announcement from Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer about his retirement. Breyer has served on the bench for nearly three decades. And Democrats in Congress are now vowing a swift confirmation of his replacement once the president announces the nominee. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. A rare opportunity for President Biden to shape his legacy and make history by filling a seat on the nation's highest court. 
The White House is set to announce that Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer will retire at the end of his term. The president now has the chance to make good on his campaign promise to name a black woman to the Supreme Court for the first time. The president has uh, stated and reiterated his commitment to nominating a black woman to the Supreme Court and certainly uh, stands by that. Biden's first choice is believed to be 51-year-old Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, a former clerk to Justice Breyer, who was confirmed to the D.C. Court of Appeals with some Republican support last year. Other contenders include Judge Leandra Kruger of the California Supreme Court, Judge Leslie Abrams Gardner of the U.S. District Court of Georgia, and Judge J. Michelle Childs of the U.S. District Court of South Carolina. Democrats are already promising a speedy confirmation process for Biden's nominee. We want to move quickly. We want to get this done as soon as possible. If confirmed, President Biden's nominee will replace a justice whose legacy includes supporting the Affordable Care Act, expanding free speech, and defending a woman's right to choose by upholding abortion rights. While he frequently sided with the court's liberal justices, Breyer was a pragmatist who sought to build consensus and compromise, insisting the court is not a political institution. My experience of more than more than 30 years since the appeals court as a judge has shown me that once men and women take the judicial oath, they take that oath to heart. With the midterms coming in a slim 51 vote majority in the Senate, Democrats are hoping to mirror the swift confirmation process of Justice Amy Coney Barrett, which lasted about one month. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Outside with Lackey, I mean, I don't want to disparage the weather in any way, but this is getting kind of boring. Mid 50s, cloudy, maybe some sun. Mid 50s. That's Hold on. Old Stand old by. by. You're bored. Hey, we we don't want to get too too crazy with the weather. Okay, we had a rough year last year. Let's keep things <laughs> smooth. Here. Okay. Smooth sailing. Well, if boring uh, is good. Then okay. <laughs> we've got some clouds out there right now. Uh, the aquifer is down two tenths of a foot to 662.2. Still looking for some rain. And in the pollen counts just mold, as we mentioned earlier, 190 in the low category. We have some chances of rain tonight. Another chance coming up on Monday. Maybe some more chances down the line. A busy seven-day forecast. We'll take a look coming up. Did I hear this right? Did Justin just say that there was no mountain cedar? In yeah. The when was the last time you heard that? Um way out of mountain Caesar season. Yeah, maybe October. Yeah. That was like actual applause in the newsroom earlier for <laughs> I us. mean, come on. That's, I mean, that's yes, special. Ooh, it's it is. A big Yesterday's day. count was really low. Usually but, we have this all the way into February, right? Yes. I, I feel like the season peaked a little earlier this year. We're kind of on the backside of it already. So that's, that's good news. Uh, it, it was uh, cold this morning, too. We saw temperatures fall down to about 32 degrees. Bernie stage 37 at the airport. One of the reasons for that, we had the clouds clear out and uh, that allowed temperatures to drop. Where the clouds were uh, building in this morning, we saw some warmer numbers. 50 in Carrizo Springs, 48 in Uvalde. Uh, so a cold start, but we're seeing temperatures warm up fairly nicely because we are seeing some sun now. 58 degrees at the airport, calm winds, and the dew point at 40. That number's going to be on the increase tonight, and so will these clouds. Yeah, it looks okay right now, but you notice the clouds are starting to surge in from the south and west. I think uh, things get pretty cloudy here soon and stay cloudy most of the night. We're underneath the clouds in Hondo, 56 there, 53 Uvalde, 54 Carrizo Springs, and clouds starting to fill in now for areas that have seen sun today, including San Antonio and the Braunfels and over towards Gonzales, where it is 61 at this shower. Rest of today, I think temperatures make it up to about 60. We probably won't warm up too much more from where we are right now just because of the cloud cover and notice around six to eight o'clock we start to add in some rain chances small rain chances but chances nonetheless uh, even better chances tonight as we fall down into the 40s showers some drizzle likely overnight bad news here doesn't add up to much it's all going to be really light and we'll start to see northeasterly winds kick up overnight too as the front comes through so here's how it looks with the forecast. This is 6 p.m. Notice we've got some light showers developing down to the south. Then it becomes a little bit more widespread by midnight, probably where it is most busy on the radar just with this light shower activity. By, say, 7 a.m., showers are already starting to push south. We're getting that drier air starting to work in. By midday, clouds are pushing out of here. And by the afternoon, we're looking at some sun. So if you have Friday evening plans, 
looks pretty good. It'll be a little chilly, it'll be a little bit breezy, but sky's clear and uh, should uh, lead to a very, very nice weekend. Uh, speaking of needing some rain, this is the latest drought monitor. Just came in today and things continue to get worse. San Antonio now in a moderate drought, the entire area in a moderate drought, but you start to see a severe drought and even extreme drought showing up as you get south and west of San Antonio. So rain is desperately needed. We do have a few chances here or there in the extended forecast and most of Texas, by the way, in need of some rain at this point. You look at the big picture here. There's not much there today. It's mostly just cloud cover. Uh, there is the front that we were talking about. Some moisture is trying to surge up out ahead of it. Dew points are climbing a little bit, and that's what's going to lead to those showers overnight tonight. So here's the uh, the, the big picture. This uh, area of low pressure trough digs across the middle part of the country. That's what helps to push the front through our neck of the woods. But this is going to be a big weather maker for the east coast so this uh, turns into a nor'easter and this is going to crank up the wind and the snowfall up to a foot of snow possible up across parts of new england places like boston could get a ton of snow out of this so this is going to cause travel delays and issues over the weekend as it hits the population centers there along the east coast now for us uh, the weekend looks great as i said as we get into next week, a little piece of energy comes in out of the west. This may kick up a few showers and storms Monday morning, and that'll be our next chance for rain. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 60 today, 56 tomorrow. Some clearing and breezy. 31 Saturday morning, we will see a light freeze here in San Antonio. 63 Saturday, 68 Sunday, and sunny. Chance of showers and storms early on Monday. And then 70s Tuesday and Wednesday. But as Ursula alluded to earlier, Beyond Wednesday, uh oh, looks like things are going to get pretty cold. We'll keep you posted, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. <laughs> I, they can't get a break. They don't they make mistakes at the What's wrong time. What's happening here? Ah, man. You know what? First of all, playing back-to-back -back games never easy. Right. Going from Houston the night before, the worst team in the Western Conference, to Memphis last night, the third best team in the Western Conference, certainly a tough challenge. But yes, the Spurs could not catch any breaks last night. Once again, though, DJ was the shining star as the Spurs fall short. And John ja Moran told us after the game that he played for his grandma. Coming up. I mean, do y'all see Jaron Jackson right now? And the level he's playing, you know, on the defensive end. Uh, six blocks. Uh, I think, you know, Jaron probably need a, a Windex commercial. Uh, <laughs> I told him I'm going to put his face on a, a Windex bottle uh, and sell it. So. John Morant has jokes. Unfortunately for the Spurs, Jaron Jackson Jr. had six block shots and nine rebounds last night in Big Board Sports. Certainly doing his work on the window. The Memphis Grizzlies showed the Spurs last night why they're one of the best in the West this season. The Spurs played them tough but came up on the short side of the result. San Antonio led by as many as four points in the first quarter. Memphis led by as many as 15 in the second quarter. John Morant was ahead of the Snake scoring 41 points in 37 minutes. A productive night indeed. Silver and Black had their moments. Jakob feeds Doug McDermott for an alley-oop land. Doug at six points. Jak, 18 points, seven boards, five assists. Derek White scored 14. DJ had another triple-double, 16 points, 11 assists, and 10 rebounds. San Antonio had six players in double digits, two more than Memphis did, but the Spurs fall. 118 to 110. Pop told us why after the game. Overall, the big the big problem in, in some of our games is rebounding. Uh, you know, they got 28 second chance points, and that's that's tough. Uh, you got to work awful hard to recover from that, which they did. Uh, just didn't work out. And of course, uh, it's a hell of a team. They've got 30 some wins for a reason. The second chance. You know, obviously there was more than just second chance points, but I think that's the the, uh, the main thing was second chance, so uh, it hurt us. Uh, I kept trying to preach to everybody when I was in the game, out of the game, that we're getting the stops. It's just we're not securing the basketball, so, you know, it made it tough for us. Basketball. After the game, Morant revealed during his on-court interview that he was playing with a heavy heart as his grandmother has recently fallen ill. He dedicated his 41-point effort to his grandma. 100%, uh, you know, after that first, uh, you know, timeout, uh, I got a little emotional. Uh, just was trying to, you know, set into the game 
uh, cried a little bit, but, um, you know, I just had to lock in. Uh, my mom told me she, you know, wanted me to be here and that if, you know, if anybody knows my grandma, you know, she, she wants me to play and want to be able to watch me. So, uh, that's what, you know, went into me, you know, staying, you know, here for the game. Up next for the Spurs, the Chicago Bulls tomorrow night at 730, their only regular season visit to SA. And that means former Spur DeMar DeRozan is coming back to town. His Bulls hosted the Raptors last night and picked up a relatively easy 111-105 win. DeMar led the Bulls with a team high 29 points. He made 11 of 19 field goals. He leads the team in scoring this season at 26.4 points per game. His best average in five seasons. The Bulls are second best in the East and now winners of two straight. Man, that's something to go from Spurs to the Bulls. He deserves it, though. Yeah, he, he did does. everything he could here. Yeah, he's so. a good guy. Yeah, so maybe some postseason is, is in his future. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Larry. When you order delivery from your favorite restaurant, surprises aren't always welcome. However, a couple says one man made their delivery extra special, leaving a poem on their porch while he's decided to go out of his way for others. We want to bring you the latest on the country's rising tensions with Russia over Ukraine. The press secretary for Ukraine's president says that leader will be speaking with President Biden later today. They'll no doubt be discussing the tense exchange between the Kremlin and the White House. ABC's Rena Roy with American efforts to now bolster NATO allies and Ukraine's army. As tensions escalate, the Kremlin now responding to America's written response to Moscow's security demands over Ukraine. The Biden administration denying Putin's main request, a guarantee that Ukraine never join NATO. We make clear that there are core principles that we are committed to uphold and defend, including Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and the right of states to choose their own security arrangements and alliances. The Kremlin's spokesman saying the document did not give much reason for optimism, but that Russian officials are open to more meetings. In my view, Ukraine has nothing to worry about in these negotiations, and the West remains consolidated in its response to what Russian demands. The Ukrainian foreign minister telling ABC News he doesn't think an invasion is imminent, but admits the country is under pressure. At the moment, as we speak, this number and is insufficient for the full-scale offensive against Ukraine. The Kremlin denies plans to attack, but each day releases more footage of its troops engaged in what it calls military drills. 8,500 American troops now on high alert. The U.S. also sending additional military aid, including anti-tank missiles and ammunition to the region. We certainly see every indication uh, that he is going to use military force uh, sometime, uh, perhaps now and uh, middle of February. Separate talks in Paris involving Russians, Ukrainians, as well as the French and Germans appear to have gone well with all sides recommitting to a ceasefire that hasn't held for years. A second round of talks is planned two weeks from now in Berlin. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The U.S. Navy is still trying to recover a fighter jet that crashed into the South China Sea as the Chinese government watches over their every move. On Monday, the pilot of the F-35C Lightning II fighter jet was attempting to land on an aircraft carrier when the jet skidded and fell into the sea. The pilot ejected safely and was rescued by an American military helicopter. A military expert says the Navy is working diligently to retrieve the aircraft to keep the Chinese government from recovering it and any American military technology. It's believed Chinese officials are shadowing the Navy's recovery efforts. China considers the South China Sea its territory. Warm here compared to up north. Extreme bitter cold taking a grip of New England again. And road crews are braving some serious conditions to keep the region moving. ABC's Rob Marciano has the story. Wind chills here outside of Boston below zero. The cold air is in place. 
And they are ready here in eastern New England. Look at all the salt, 300,000 tons of it in this stockyard just outside of Boston. They bring it in from Chile and Mexico on ships, and they dump it off into these piles some 40 feet high. These front loaders then scoop it up, put it into the dump trucks and tractor trailers, and those trucks take it to local towns across the area where their local crews will then spread it on the roads. But the last couple of years, there's been a, a lack of drivers and trucks, so they're worried that even with all this salt, the lack of manpower and machine will make it difficult to clear these roads. But I tell you this, the guys that are working uh, these crews here, this is their bread and butter. So they kind of want that track to be a little bit closer to this shore so they get more of a, a big snowfall. The rest of us are hoping this thing goes out to sea. We'll see what happens. Either way, less than two days now for these crews to prepare for this storm. Rob Marcy on ABC News, Chelsea, Massachusetts. A new report shows the U.S. economy grew at its fastest rate last year since the 1980s. Thursday, the Bureau of Economic Analysis reported on the U.S. gross domestic product and the country's broadest measure of economic activity. The report shows the GDP expanded nearly 6% in 2021. This is the fastest pace since 1984. Meanwhile, fewer Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week. That comes after three straight increases. The Labor Department says that jobless claims fell by 30,000. Look at outside with live cam. Are we in the 60s? Did we make it? Just barely, just barely. The clouds are starting to move in, so it's probably gonna hold at about that number throughout the rest of the afternoon. It's things starting to get a little more cloudy here in San Antonio after a morning with quite a bit of sun. Let's look at the satellite picture and you can see where the clouds are. Pretty thick clouds now off to the south and west of San Antonio. Notice we're starting to see a few light returns on the radar down there around Beville, an indication that moisture is starting to come in. And we'll see more of this as we get into tonight. Showers and drizzle become uh, a good possibility overnight. We're not going to pick up much rain out of it, but it will be a little damp. Uh, going into your morning commute. There's the scene outside still seeing some sun at the moment. Temperatures sitting in 58 degrees officially at the airport. Dew point is at 40 and we've got calm winds. 50s for the most part, but we are starting to see a few 60s where we are seeing the sun today. 60 in Gonzales closing in on 60 here in San Antonio underneath the clouds, mostly mid 50s out towards places like Uvalde and Carrizo Springs. Tonight we'll see that the chance of showers drizzle temperatures fall into the 40s. A good northeasterly wind 10 to 15 miles per hour and we should make it to about 56 tomorrow, but that will be with sun tomorrow afternoon after the clouds clear from there. Temperatures start to rise above average. We'll see some warmer numbers, especially Sunday into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But beyond that, looks like we're going to get some cold air. Well, more on the entire seven day forecast coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. A couple getting a pleasant surprise, courtesy of their delivery driver. So they decided to pay it for it and give a surprise to him of his own. Why he was so chucked up. Still ahead. And some good news for the Cowboys when it comes to one of their coordinators. Larry Ramirez will have that coming up in sports. A Twitter account determined to ruin a popular game has its fun spoiled. We have details still ahead. Twitter has suspended the account of a bot spoiling the answers for the popular Wordle game. You've no doubt seen the green, black, and yellow tiles all over your social media feeds. It's so much fun. <laughs> the new trend proudly posts your best Wordle scores. But on Twitter, the bot would reply with a quote, guess what? People don't really care about your mediocre <laughs> linguistic escapades. <laughs> to teach you a lesson tomorrow's word is, and then the bot spoils the game by telling you tomorrow's answer. Smart aleck little bot. In a statement, Twitter says the account violates its rules, banning users from spamming people with unsolicited mentions. Wordle is a free game. It gives players six tries to figure out the five letter word of the day. You did it today in like- I did it today yes. in three tries. It was like quick. I'm trying to beat Justin's record. Ooh. A Texas couple says a person delivering food to their home went above and beyond, so they decided to repay the favor. As ABC's Will Gans explains, they went to great lengths to track the man down and give him a $6,000 tip in person. 
When you order food online, sometimes a surprise can be a bad thing. Never had this type of experience. But for Tracy Ramirez and her boyfriend Jonas Honey, their doorbell security camera caught their delivery driver going above and beyond, laying down tissue paper and dropping off an extra gift bag filled with water, masks, and a handwritten note and poem. Tracy sharing the video to TikTok determined to track him down. I don't know if you've seen uh, Taken with Liam Neeson, but uh, she's like him. Oh, I will find you. <laughs> Her particular set of skills paying off. I just wanted to do something kind. With his phone scotch taped to his dashboard, Donald Jackson leaving the little gift bags after he was diagnosed with congestive heart failure two years ago, praying that when he started feeling better, he'd pay it forward. All of that positive energy was filling me back up and I just started, you know, feeling Happy. Tracy and Jonas inviting Donald over for dinner where she let him know she'd set up a GoFundMe on his behalf. I wanted to give you a bigger tip. A $6,000 tip to be exact. You serious? I hope this at least makes him feel half as good as he made us feel. Meanwhile in Idaho, Annabelle Stevens posted this video of her door dasher. Annabelle finding out her dasher is Carrie, a 71 year old widowed security guard with two sons whose wife died in 2011. Working this job to make ends meet. Annabelle also setting up a GoFundMe that's raised thousands of dollars already for Carrie. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Love these stories. Great. Give it, give it it back. It's truly the good and bad of technology, right? So right. you mentioned the, the bot, bot on yeah. Twitter, but then you have TikTok and GoFundMe that does a lot of good stuff, too. So it's all a trade-off, I guess. How many tries on Wordle today? Uh, four. Ah, beat you. It's competition now. Every day. We're throwing down. <laughs> yeah. 58 degrees so far today. 37 was the low this morning. Records are 84 and 18. Set back in 1972 and 1897. We've got uh, several chances of rain down the line here. We'll talk about the seven-day forecast coming up. Well, <laughs> he's bored with the weather. Bad, well, this is but I, kind of the I same have, stuff. I have friends up in the northeastern part of the they country. <laughs> they were telling me that with the wind chill, it was like six degrees below Ooh. zero. It is brutally cold in the up morning. There. I mean, I, yes. Don't be bored. That's be happy. Right. Be happy with what we got. These yeah. 60, 60 is really pretty well, good. Well, when it all started, I figured my glass was half full, but now it's pretty much, you know, same <laughs> so old we thing. We're on. Day. We're getting those uh, ditto days is what we're getting. Fair. Hey, we're going to get you a good weekend, David. So there's okay. that. Uh, now we're talking. Yes, some beautiful weather. <laughs> Not for those folks up northeast that we were just talking about because they're going to get hit with a big storm system this weekend. First, though, let's start with the time lapse. See the clouds have been kind of off and on today. We started with a few clouds, got some blue skies for a while. Now clouds are trying to build back in. 58 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 40. 57 Bandera, 57 Rio Medina. It's cloudy out there. Uh, New Braunfels, though, still seeing sun. 58 degrees, 55 Canyon Lake, 62 at Stinson, one of the warm spots on the map today. 55 Katua here at 56 out in Del Rio and the dew point forecast here for the next 30 hours or so. We'll see dew points increase into the 40s. That's not all that humid, but there's enough moisture there where we're going to start to see maybe some drizzle and showers develop by tomorrow morning before a front comes through and dries us out again. Dew points fall back down into the 20s tomorrow afternoon. Here's how it looks on the forecast. So if you're planning out your evening, Know that it'll be cloudy for the most part, but then by say 10, 11, 12 a.m., we start to see showers really develop here. This is all gonna be really light stuff, uh, but it will make for some wet roads and uh, possibly a wet commute tomorrow morning. This is around seven o'clock. The bulk of the action will be pushing south, but I still think we have a few lingering showers before that dry air really pushes in. The clouds clear, sun comes out tomorrow afternoon and Friday evening looks great although it will be a little chilly and a little breezy from time to time in the weekend. Yeah, that looks awesome too. Uh, 59 degrees by two o'clock. We'll be up around 60 today for a high temperature, mostly cloudy skies. We start to add in some small rain chances as we get towards six to 8 p.m. And then those rain chances pick up overnight. Showers, drizzle, northeasterly winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, here is the uh, satellite picture and notice we're already starting to detect a few showers down there around Beeville. These are lifting north, but this is uh, going to increase, I think, in coverage, this kind of activity as we get into tonight. And these clouds are probably thicken up a little bit too. Big picture across the state of Texas 
and uh, you can see where all the clouds are stretching from Dallas back to San Antonio and deep south Texas. Not a lot of rain there, though. And this is the storm system that's uh, moving through that's going to give us that small window for rain tonight. Uh, we mentioned the East Coast. They're going to get a bigger chunk of energy here that's going to work up the East Coast as a nor'easter, a classic nor'easter here. And that's going to dump a ton of snow. Washington, D.C., not so much snow there, but places like New York, Boston, up to Maine. This is where there could be some very heavy snow and strong winds, too, up to a foot possible as uh, that system takes hold. And that's tomorrow afternoon before uh, moving out Sunday. Then we turn our attention to this little system here. This is uh, going to move in. It looks like Monday morning, so th the weekend's great, but Monday morning it looks like we could get a few showers and maybe a storm. The window is small for this. But I'm hoping we at least get some measurable rain because we do need it. 60 degrees today, 56 tomorrow and breezy clearing once those showers move out. 63 Saturday, 68 on Sunday and sunny. We will have a freeze Saturday morning. There's your chance of rain Monday morning, 30% shot. And then uh, 70s Tuesday and Wednesday with another chance of rain on Wednesday. And then beyond Wednesday, looks like it's going to turn much colder. A pretty strong cold front heads our way and we can see some pretty chilly temperatures end of next week, guys. We're looking at the uh, the cattle drive through town. Ooh. Might be a little chilly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, Cowboys could have had a really bad offseason, but apparently things are going very well for the Cowboys, especially when it comes to coaches. Yeah, it looks like uh, both of their head coordinators, defensive and offensive guys, it looks like they're going to stay put in Dallas, so we got more on that coming up. Plus, we've also got... Uh, DeJounte Murray talking about DeMar DeRozan, who spent three seasons here in the Silver and Black, so it's no wonder he's a big-time friendship, has a big-time friendship with uh, DJ. Plus, the Valero Texas Open picked up a huge commitment today. Coming up. I'll always remember this one. This is, um, is going to hold a special place in my heart. That was Jordan Spieth after winning the 2021 Valero Texas Open, and he's coming back for more in Big Board Sports. Spurs point guard DeJounte Murray recorded his 14th career triple-double last night, which tied a Spurs franchise record in their 118-110 loss to the Grizzlies. He had 16 points, 10 boards, and 11 assists. Now DJ and the Spurs are getting ready to host the Bulls tomorrow night, and that means the return of DeMar DeRozan. Me and DeMar talk every day. Uh... We, we became really tight, uh, and that's my brother, that's my family. Uh, we're always around each other, always talking. Uh, he called me after games, I call him after games, so ain't nothing changed, just the teams. Uh, I'm rooting for him, you know, he's rooting for me, he's rooting for his organization. Uh, you know, he's a classy dude, real professional guy, uh, you know, so it'd be great to have him come in town. And Spurs will host the Bulls tomorrow night at 7.30. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It looks like Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn is not leaving Dallas after all. It's being reported by multiple outlets that Quinn has informed teams that he will be staying with the Cowboys as their D.C. Quinn turned the Dallas defense around in one year to lead the league in takeaways. And Cowboys offensive coordinator Kellen Moore is not expected to receive any head coaching offers and is more than likely to stay in Dallas. That's according to Yahoo Sports, even though Moore met with Miami, Jacksonville, Denver, and Minnesota. San Antonio's Mario Barrios is moving up to welterweight to face Keith Thurman on February 5th in Las Vegas. The premier boxing champions fight will be on pay-per-view. We caught up with El Azteca and wanted to know why he decided to fight such a popular fighter in this welterweight debut. I'm not scared to step in the ring with, with anybody, you know. I, I know that, you know, I've been boxing since I was six years old. So, you know, I, I know I have the boxing IQ, you know. Um, I have the speed, I have the power, you know, I have the, the, the intelligence, you know, to to compete, you know, with uh, with the best in the sport. And um, that, was, that was ultimately the reason why, you know, we, we, we took such a dangerous fight. 
The winner of this fight will likely move up to a title eliminator bout this year, a chance to win a welterweight championship title. You can read more about the upcoming fight on the instant replay page of KSAT.com. And 2021 Valero Texas Open champion and world number 14 Jordan Spieth is coming back to San Antonio to defend his title and attempt to become the first VTO champion to win back to back since fellow major championship winner Zach Johnson accomplished the feat in 2008 2009. The 144 man field is scheduled to compete in the historical PGA Tour stop on TPC San Antonio's The Oaks Course, March 28th through April 3rd, a week preceding the Masters Tournament. And it's the 100th anniversary of the VTO. Guys? One of the longest running golf tournaments in the history of the PGA, if I'm not mistaken. That's Maybe correct. Like the second? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, pretty yeah. cool. I know that. Pretty cool. Jordan Speed coming back. Ooh, like that. And Mike and Fiona hanging out at SA Live. What y'all oh. doing today? Well, we have got a dear friend on the show today and making something good and making a good cocktail, too. <laughs> yes. Season 19 finalist of Hell's Kitchen, Chef Mary Lou Davis. Hi. Our dear friend. How are you? <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you for having me back. You've got some big news because you're going to be kind of moving on and heading over to the West Coast. But before you do, what are we making today? We are going to make a dirty fried rice, and then we're also going to make a cocktail that's inspired by me. All yeah. right. And well, tell folks about your pop-up tonight, too. Oh, I'm having a pop-up. It's going to be at Eva Olive off of Thousand Oaks and Jones Maltburger and it's pretty much like my big going away party. There's going to be my food, there's going to be cocktails, there's going to be a DJ and at the end there's going to be karaoke. And a great <laughs> cocktail that commemorates her time on Hell's Kitchen. Hey, toffee. There is a local company make double sided toffee. This is the best stuff you have ever eaten. Oh my goodness gracious. And Grammy nominated musician Alex Meiser joins us with a few tunes of his own and how you can see him perform at Krause's Cafe and Beer Garden. His enthusiasm is just, if you're still sitting down when he starts playing, I don't know what. So, all right, Riverwalk has been drained, they're cleaning it out. What do you think they found in there? Yeah, what, hmm. what's the weirdest thing you think they might find in there? Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. You might see your answer during the show.